Let's now move on to discuss about velocity time equation and velocity time graph. So how we'll do this is we will bring back what we learned about displacement time equation and displacement time graph and we'll try to relate velocity time graph with place, displacement time graph. And from there, we build the equation to relate between velocity and time. Okay, so this is the oscillation that we will see the most in our matriculation syllabus. Our matriculation syllabus, usually the oscillation starts from the equilibrium position, move towards a positive maximum displacement, then continue its oscillation like this. This one is the type of oscillation that is most common in our matriculation syllabus. And the equation to describe this kind of uh, oscillation is x equals to a sine omega t. Okay, so we now try to relate this displacement time graph towards the velocity time graph over here. So that means we will try to plot the velocity time graph based on the oscillation that we see here in this displacement time graph. Okay, so before we start to draw everything uh, clearly, let's try to pick certain important points or important moments in the motion to discuss. Okay, so I'll pick these four different moments over here. So these four different dots here represents the moment in which the object is at its maximum displacement, either the positive maximum displacement or the negative maximum displacement. So why do I highlight these four different moments over here? Because these are the moments in which the object is making a U-turn. Why do I say so? I'll try to recall what happens. The object is at the equilibrium position, then it moves towards positive A. So it moves to the right towards positive A. Then what happened after it passed through this red dot is you make a change in direction to move towards the equilibrium position. So previously it was moving to the right, reached the positive maximum displacement. Then you move to the left towards the equilibrium position. Then you continue to pass by the equilibrium position moving towards x equals to negative a. So this whole motion here is to the left. It's from positive a to negative a. But this whole motion here is from 0 to positive a. So it's from 0 to positive a. So there's a change in direction in between. Okay, Over here, you also can see that the object moved from positive a to negative a, make a change in direction, move towards the equilibrium position, continue towards x equals to positive a. So there's a change in direction over here at this red dot and once it travels from this position negative a to positive a, it makes another change in direction to move towards negative a and makes another change in direction to move towards the equilibrium position. So these four points over here represents the points in which the object changed direction. And we learn from chapter 2 kinematics of linear motion that if an object experiences a change in direction towards the opposite direction, say from up to down, or from left to right, or right to left, or down to up, any change in direction from one direction to the opposite direction, the velocity will have to be equal to zero at the moment in which the direction is changed. So for these four points over here, you are making a U-turn, therefore your velocity should be equal to zero at these four points over here. So knowing that, we should expect that if we draw our velocity time graph, these four points here should have velocity equals to zero. So why do I say velocity subscript x is because this is the x component of velocity. I'm trying to highlight that it's x component of velocity so that we can put in positive and negative sign. If we just leave it as v, then it's magnitude, then usually we will put in sign. But many books ignore this x. But I still think it's better to introduce this x because we are saying clearly that this is component x component of velocity. Okay, so we know these four points here equals zero, but we don't know what happens at the rest of these moments over here. What happens in between these dots? And that is what we want to determine right now. We'll try to study the same oscillation, but I'm going to simplify the diagram to become something like this. Well, I'm not going to draw the spring, I'm just going to draw the surface and the wall and these three specific positions, which are the equilibrium position and the two maximum displacement. So now I'm going to study this motion starting from the first section in which the object moves from the equilibrium position towards the positive A. Okay, so the object is starting from equilibrium position and it moves towards the positive direction. 
So the motion is from x equals to 0 towards x equals to positive a. So for this motion over here, the motion is from x equals to 0 to x equals to positive a. So we can see here this motion here is in the positive direction. And if our motion is in the positive direction, the, our understanding of velocity tells us that the direction of velocity is the same as the direction of motion. If the motion is to the right, then the direction of velocity will be to the right. Then the x component of velocity will be positive uh, value. Okay. If the object is moving to the left, then the direction of velocity will be pointing to the left. If the direction of velocity is pointing to the left, then the x component of velocity will be a negative value because negative direction is the negative, uh, it's, the ne it's negative, so it's negative value for velocity. So if the object is now moving in a positive direction, the direction of velocity is positive, therefore the value for the x component of velocity will be a positive value for x component of velocity. Therefore, you should expect when you plot your graph from t0 to t2, your, uh, your graph should be somewhere up here. Okay, so this is what, should, what you should expect for this uh, time interval over here. Okay, let's move on to the next time interval, which is from t2 to t6. So uh, in between this uh, duration over here, the object will move from x equals to plus a to x equals to minus a. So you should expect the object to move from here to here okay so this object moved from x equals to plus a to x equals to minus a so this motion here is in the negative direction you are moving to the left the moving to the left is the negative direction so if you are moving to the left then that's the negative direction your velocity will be in the negative direction as well so if your velocity is in the negative direction your x component of velocity will be a negative value so therefore, you should expect between T2 and T6, your plot will be below the time axis because this is where your x component of velocity is negative. So this is where you should plot your uh, velocity time graph for this interval over here. Continue. The next section over here from T6 to T10, the object will be moving from negative A to positive A. So the motion is from here to here. So this motion here, it's in the positive direction is pointing to the right so the motion is in the positive direction therefore your x component of velocity will be positive your x component of velocity should be positive so when you plot it it should be above the time axis so you should expect a plot to be around here okay next section for this section you're moving from positive a to negative a so if you look over here it's moving to the left so it's moving in the negative direction, therefore your x component of velocity will be negative. Your value for vx will be a negative value, therefore you should plot your uh, graph somewhere below the time axis. And lastly, for the last section over here, you're moving from x equals to negative a towards x equals to zero. So your motion here is in the positive direction. The motion is in positive direction, therefore your x component of velocity should be positive. Therefore, you should expect your plot to be somewhere up here. So now you know your, your plot will alternate between up, down, up, down, up. And you know you have to pass through zero at these four particular points. So if you think about it, logically try to deduce it, you find that the shape of the graph should be something like this. You can't find other shape that fits this description over here. If you start from here, then you reach the amplitude over here then you cannot pass through this point already. Therefore, you must start like this. Then if you go downwards, you have to bend over here in order to come back to zero because you have to hit zero over here. So if you logically deduce it, right, the shape of the graph must be like this. And this shape over here, it's a cos curve. This is a cosine curve. Therefore, you should expect this uh, equation here to have a cosine over here. But you see the period is still this the same, you still fit in two oscillations within the same time. You still fit in two oscillations within the same time. So that means there's nothing changed inside it. It's still the same omega, still the same time as just now. But what you're not sure is this amplitude over here, what should I put in over here? Is it still the same A or is it is it different from A from just now? So this one we leave it blank. 
then we will leave it to our derivation to determine what should I put in over here. So now let's move on to the derivation. So we learned from chapter 2 that our x component of velocity, we can obtain it by dx over dt. So this is what you learned in chapter 2. vx is equal to dx over dt. So technically this is instantaneous velocity. This is how the position change with time. So now you know this equation and you also know that x is equal to a sine omega t for this oscillation here. x is equal to a sine omega t. So we can substitute this equation here to replace x. So now our equation, we substitute a sine omega t to replace x. So it will become like this. Now we will start to do our differentiation. Of course, uh, differentiation, probably you haven't learned it properly in your maths yet. So I'll just do... I'll just briefly explain it, okay? First thing what you do is you check whether there's anything that is constant that does not change with time. If that thing does not change with time, you can bring it out from the differentiation. So the amplitude here is constant. You never change your amplitude. The amplitude doesn't get smaller. The amplitude doesn't get larger. So the amplitude remains constant with time. So it's a constant. We can bring it out. So it becomes A, then D sine omega t divided by dt. So now over here, you want to differentiate sine omega t against dt. To differentiate this straightforward, uh, straightforward direct differentiation, you cannot. Because here inside the bracket is omega t, but you're differentiating against t. So what you need to do is you need to do chain rule. Chain rule say if you are differentiating dy dx, you can change it to dy dA, dA dx. If you're not sure about that, you can refer back to your SPM books on differentiation. You break it from dy dx into dy dA, dA dx. Okay, so that's what we are going to do now. We are going to break it into d sine omega t divided by d omega t. So then we write the same thing over here, d omega t divided by dt. So previously this is dy dx, now it becomes dy dA, dA dx. Okay, you can see these two things are the same. So if you potong, potong, if you cut it, cut it, then you get the same thing back as here. Okay, so why do we do this step over here? Because now it allows us to differentiate what's inside our differentiation bracket over here. Sine, if we differentiate it, it become cos. Cos, if we differentiate it, it become negative sine. So this one, it's a uh, differentiation. You have to know it uh, by heart, okay? Sine differentiate, it become cos. So what happens around here will become cos omega t. Okay, what happens at the back over here, you are differentiating omega t against t. You know that omega, it's a constant, so you can bring it out, so it becomes dt divided dt. So it becomes omega. So it will be omega dt divided by dt, dt divided by dt become 1. So 1 times omega become omega. Okay, uh, I'm going a bit too detailed, but uh, if your maths teacher teach, you probably teach like this, you differentiate outside, then differentiate inside. So if you differentiate outside, you get cos omega t. Then you differentiate inside the bracket, differentiate dif differentiate inside the bracket, then you get omega. Okay? So once you reach this step already, you can rearrange the equation. Then you can see that omega cos omega t is at the back. So what's in front must be a times omega. So what you should fill in over here is a omega. And now if you look at this equation over here, then you can know that what you need to fill in over here will be a omega. Okay, we fill in what's in front here as the maximum and minimum. So what's in front here is a omega. So our maximum will be positive a omega. Our minimum will be negative a omega. Okay, so this is how you draw a velocity time graph. And this is the equation for this graph over here. Okay, so... That's roughly it. But again, as we mentioned last time, our equation for x, right, can be cosine. Or sometimes it can even has plus minus phi at the back. So this equation is not a fixed equation. This equation, you have to derive it every time using differentiation. You cannot just say uh, v is always cos omega. It can be sine sometimes. It can be negative sine sometimes. It can be negative cos sometimes as well. It depends on what is your equation for x. So let's try another example. Let's say today I'm not using this x equals a sine omega t. 
Let's say today I'm using x equals to a cos omega t. That means I let my object starts from the amplitude. It starts from here. So my graph is something like this. So if my graph is something like this, let's try to determine what's the equation for vx. What's the equation for velocity? So if my equation is a cos omega t and I substitute it inside, uh, oh, okay, yeah, these points will be zero because these points are points where you make a U-turn. So here the velocity should be zero. So now we proceed with our differentiation. We substitute in a cos omega t inside here. Then bring out the a because it's a constant. So cos omega t, we want to differentiate. You need to use chain rule. So you break it from dy dx to dy dA, dA dx. So you break it into something like this. Okay, so this part over here, if you differentiate cos, you get negative sine. So what happens here is negative sine omega t. Whereas for the back over here, it's still the same. Differentiate omega t against dt, then you get omega. So now if you rearrange the equation, you can see that it's negative a omega sine omega t. If this is your equation, you see that the shape of your graph will be negative sine. So you should expect a graph that is negative sine, something like this. And you see here, uh, it's a omega. That means the maximum over here should be plus a omega. And the bottom over here should be negative a omega. So that is how you draw your graph. So negative sine, the shape is negative sine. It's a sine curve, but being flipped vertically. So negative sine. Then a omega here represents the maximum velocity that you can achieve. And if it's negative a omega, then it's the maximum velocity that you can achieve in the negative direction. Okay, so this is what will happen if your displacement time graph is like a cosine curve. Okay, if it's sine, then it's different. If it's cos, then it's different. So you have to do your differentiation by yourself. So here I put it as side-by-side -side comparison. If it's a sine omega t, if your graph starts from the origin, then move towards the positive maximum displacement, then it'd be a sine omega t. Then if you differentiate it, you get a omega cos omega t for your velocity. But if your object starts from the positive, uh, positive maximum displacement, start from somewhere on the right, then move towards the equilibrium position, then your x will be a cos omega t. And if you differentiate it, cos will become negative sine. So it become negative a omega sine omega t. Okay, so you have to do the differentiation. You cannot memorize the formula. You have to do the differentiation by yourself. And the main message that I want to carry right now is there is no fixed equation to relate between x and t and v and t. How do you determine the equation? Look at how the object starts oscillates. If it starts from origin, then probably it's a sine or a negative sign. If it starts from the maximum displacement, either up or down, then it might be cos or negative cos. Then after that, for the velocity, you have to differentiate it to get the actual equation. You cannot memorize. There's no actual formula. There's no fixed formula for this. Okay, so that's velocity time equation and also velocity time graph.